We'll be looking in Matthew chapter 5. Smarty pants. I ain't left there yet. This is just a stop along the way. <laughs> hey, you don't ever get through with it. You know that. Um, that body you living in, your soul's paying some high rent for. And you ain't going to come out from it until you've paid the uttermost father, huh? There's a part of you that you got right now, right here in this church house right now, that ain't going to make the trip. It's going to get buried in that dirt out there. And you ain't ever going to have it no more. We look at it as a gruesome thing, but that's deliverance. Never to not want, Joseph what God wants no more. Never to not have, have that problem. I hope I didn't say that wrong. You know what I mean. Always to want what God wants and your soul and your body's going to just fit like a glove. You'll be glorified. When you see him, you'll see him as he is. You'll be like him. What a great miracle. Let's ask the Lord for his help. My Father, I thank you for the gathering here today. Um, I pray that you would take the room even as already requested, I pray others have that you would ascend the throne of both your glory and your grace in our hearts for we are living in the kingdom of God now not in the future. It is within our hearts, but oh, that part of us that still is even the brother brought in the devotion that does not understand just who you are. Lord, you ain't got nothing to work with. There's nothing here. We've all sinned. We've all come short of that glory. You're going to have to make a new creation. And so you ain't got nothing to work with. I pray for our particular understanding today that we would be able to look into the spiritual life that is ever before us. Help us to trust you. Help us to love you. Lord, we can't do nothing without you. You ain't got nothing to work with. I pray now you go with us, help this unworthy wretch to give honor and glory to you. And I pray for these that you love. You loved us before we were. You loved us while you was. And you'll love us when you come. And we give thanks and praise only by the name of Jesus. We come to you, Father, our holy God, in his name, pleading that you would preach this gospel and let it reach its destination to our darling, our hearts, our souls, that part that you want. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, if you get to talking to God, sometimes you just want to stay right there. There ain't no need going nowhere else. Amen. In verse number 21, we'll start right here. Jesus. 
Well, Jesus had an easy ministry, didn't he? <laughs> Hypocrisy of religion was after him his whole life. We got the law. We got the temple. We got we, we, we. He was doing battle, spiritual battle. Put up your sword, Peter. It ain't that kind of fight. I'm trusting in my Father. No matter how gloomy it looks, God can do anything and will for His glory. He will not share it with another. That's His. Well, why did He do that? For His own pleasure. You can ask God anything you want to, but get ready for the answer. <laughs> Amen. All right, and so in verse 21 it said, You have heard that it was said of them in time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. God got anything to work with. You've already violated it, amen? And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. God got anything to work with? Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, go thy way, First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. You ain't, you know, when, when, when you made a mess of everything, you need to be reconciled also with the one you made a mess with. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? Has God got anything to work with? <laughs> We've all sinned. We've all come short. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Now, I don't care how good a person thinks they is. That is not natural in you. And that's another voice in you that's not yours. And that one is telling you, don't you do it. <laughs> God's, God's not far from every one of us. While us thou art in the way with him, do it quickly. It, it, Y'all, it's better to go ahead and slay it, kill it. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. Listen, what he says right here, it, it, it'll blow you, we'll say socks. I started to say britches. Look at <laughs> in verse 26. Uh, Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about a situation. I don't care what your situation is. You got a situation. And until you agree with your adversary while you're in the way quickly, you're not going to come out of it. Till thou hast paid the uttermost fatherland. Now, what interests me here in my spiritual man, because I, I believe I am a spiritual man, because uh, I need God to forgive me. I believe that God ain't got nothing here to work with. That when he found me, I was in my blood. And he, and he took me. Amen? But he didn't have nothing to work with. We understand that when you create something, you're not making something. There's nothing to work with. You are a new creature. 
In Christ, that word is also rendered creation. You are a new creation. And there is a part in there that's not like the old. It's called the new man and the old man. And you're not going to come to this place, the fence. I want to come to the fence, Cindy. I want to get fence from here. I want to I wanna see my trials over fast as they happen. Amen? Do they? <laughs> Usually not. Sometimes they do, and I and, and oh boy, I'm oh thank you Jesus. I'm a, man. I'm ready to fight the line then, and then five minutes later, I'm down. Oh poor woe is me. Look at chapter sixteen. I grew up with a songwriter, Clay. It ain't easy to put words on paper all the time, but sometimes it just blah, falls out of you. And that's the way preaching is. Sometimes God drags it out of you, and sometimes it's, it, it's like you. It just went blah. <laughs> because, uh, you see, it's, it's a burden. And, and God's doing things. He's harbanging in your life to get you down here to, because he loves his people and he said, Peter, who do you love? Feed my sheep. You give them something that's going to be useful. Amen. Y'all pray for me. Uh, it, 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 you go back and you measure your life and you look at what you've done and you say, God, have mercy on my soul. Because you've been dead, but let you know all these people, oh, I want to preach to 10,000 so I want to preach in the stadium. And, oh, you do? You want to be responsible for all those souls? One of you is worth more than this whole world. Dear soul, that's a tremendous responsibility. But anyway, pray for me. In uh, Matthew 16, verse number 26, look here. What exchange then, so think about it like this. John, if we're going to come thence, there's going to have to be some exchange with God. You know, like you exchange in the marketplace. They used to barter. You know, you'd take a chicken to the doctor and, and he'd say, well, you didn't bring but one chicken, so you only get ten pills. You barter. And look, look so, so here we go. He says, For what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What, these are Jesus' words. He, what did he say? Is it going to profit you anything besides this? It don't profit you nothing. When, when they throw that dirt in your face, I hope they didn't lay you down while you were yet in your sins. That's what Jesus said. He said it in John. You don't want to die in your sins. I'll find you the scripture if you want me to. Okay, we'll move on. Or, and lose his own soul. For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Now, it, it, it always amazed me that in this same passage of Scripture, what he says, because we're looking off into the wild blue yonder for this day to come, and he says this, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Has this happened? Is Jesus Christ the incarnate God on God's throne? Is he the only one that will ever be on that throne? 
Is he in control of this whole shebang right now? And is there more to him by coming to God by him, acknowledging him, and agreeing with your adversary, and throwing out all this stuff that's in the way? John Newton said he had uh, 10,000 demons that he fought. Legion had 2,000. He said, I got 10 because he was a slave trader. He, could, he said, I could see every one of their beautiful faces. Oh, my soul. Listen, you don't, you don't get out of this life without paying the uttermost fatherling. You can't come thence. <laughs> hey, that's what... That's where we're coming to. That's what this is about. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew 19. And, and while you're going over there, I'm going to read you something else. <clears throat> Matthew 19. <clears throat> Can't get my motor warmed up. Listen at verse 8. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Not you. This, I was talking to me. I'm in the spiritual world. In verse 8, I'm reading to myself. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done that I may win Christ. Paul is not dead yet, but he says that I have suffered the loss of all things. I have made an exchange with God. He spent many a day in this world after he said, I count all things but dung that I may win Christ. That was to be able to come thence. And you're saying that's salvation by works. No, I'm not. I'm saying that that salvation is to heaven at work. <laughs> Work out your salvation. Woo, son. Hey, we, we might get into the meat of the coconut. In Matthew 19, verse number 23, listen to this. <clears throat> Peter was, uh, he was paying a high price and you gonna pay a high price for the privilege of that soul of yours abiding in that body of yours. But see, God ain't changing that body. God's not changing that flesh of yours to just completely want what God wants. You're going to have to be overthrown. You're going to have to come to a loss of all things and when you've lost them, to count them as nothing. That what did Jesus say? Why do you think he said, he that loveth mother, father, children more than me is not fit for the kingdom of God. Do you hear what he said? Just so that's, that's, that's heart wrenching. That, 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 that's killing stuff. The, uh, stuff that you valued more than anything else in this world. And God goes, ah! He sticks your heart with a double two-edged sword and he takes those things that you thought would always be and nothing could take it and just with one little blink of the eye, God did it. And your issues with God, hallelujah. Amen. What if God had not messed with you? What if he left you alone and not brought you thence? To be able to turn your hands loose. I like Brother Gene's old saying. He said, anything you got white knuckles on, you better loosen up because God's coming after it. <laughs> there ain't nothing in this world that ain't temporary. Nothing. Nothing. The only thing that's eternal is your life with Jesus Christ. Oh, my soul. And then verse 23 said, Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because he ain't going to do no exchanging with God. Because he's got security in his pocketbook. Because he's going to be all right with something of this world. And God is completely just 
telling you right face to face as he did the rich young ruler. He said, go sell all you got and distribute it among the poor. And the man went away grieved in spirit because he had great possession. But the best thing you can do, you rich young man, is to go do what God said and to deal with the hurt that's in you and to deal with the dying that's taking place in you because God's a killing it out. I ain't lying to you, grand gal. I'm telling you the truth that this is the way it is. If you're going to do business with God, you got to do business with God. Watch, and again I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. Who then can be saved? And Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And the old rich man says, oh, then I can still have my riches. No, you must lose it all. You got to understand that God's gonna lay you in a box or that they cook you now. They just fry you up and put you in a jar. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, God's gonna bring it to an end, amen. Oh, my soul. Listen, and I, you know, that it's ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Let me tell you, but brother was talking about David and in the uh, book of Jeremiah, there's a prophecy in chapter number eight about the Chaldeans coming in the day of, uh, in Jeremiah after his prophecy where they would uh, tear open the grave of David, the man after God's own heart. And back in them days, they would bury riches with the dead. And there was like over 300 shekels of silver and gold in the tomb there with David and the Chaldeans took his bones out and scattered them everywhere. What do you think of that? That's what God thinks of this present world. It ain't no good. And there's so God's tearing you from it so you can come thence. I wouldn't take nothing for any of my crosses, Miss Dorn. Not a one of them. I wouldn't take nothing for the worst things that's happened in my life where I ran into God and Mike Walker had to die that God live in his heart. I'd rather have Jesus. Amen. Ain't no future here. Woo, son. Blessed Jesus. Peter was paying a high rent for that body. Oh, my soul. Then Peter answered and said unto him, Behold, we forsaken all and followed thee. That what shall we have? Therefore Jesus said to them, Verily I say to you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, that's right now, it ain't in the future, it's already here, ye also shall sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Dear so what God is doing in your life in salvation, you are by those around you either remitting their sins or retaining them. One of the it's God's judgments. How He does it. God, uh, if you hit God's youngins and you, you, God don't use it for your good and bring you back out of that sort of uh, disagreement with what God's will is in this world, He's going to smack you. I don't know if He's going to be done with you, but there comes a time, as Jesus said, with Jerusalem how oft I would have gathered you and that, oh but the Jews are a special but they ain't nothing to the Jews except that they uh, God told us that's where his son was going to come from they ain't got no special blood they were human beings and that he would come out of that lineage Abraham Abraham was a Gentile when God saved him they got no right to say the things that they do. Oh, we're God's chosen. We're better than you, you bonehead. They, on the commercials where they say that Jews and Christians, I don't care if he's a Jew. I don't care if he's from Bahamia. I care whether or not he is born of the spiritual lineage of Jesus Christ because there's only one nation and that's it. All this is under him. I'm sorry I get so excited, but I get so mad when they, when they don't want to give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Hey, the world just swallows anything. Give us some more of that poison. They drink it down. You're right, brother. 
They, they, they'd rather have it. They'd rather be lied to. Make me feel good. Play me a sweet song while I go to hell. <laughs> Lord, help me, Jesus. Look at Matthew 5 again. Ooh, who's going to get the exchange? What you get in the exchange? Woo, thank you, Jesus. Miss Doran, I'm sorry you're seeing me like this, but I can't help myself. <sighs> If, if it gets too bad, just throw a tater at me or something. <laughs> Verse number three. These are those that's been exchanging with God. They're paying a high rent. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. They'd rather be poor in spirit than rich in this world. They'd rather not surrender up the life of God. And, and, and when they do, they're just sick as a, a, a dog uh, 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 with the stamper. <coughs> It just runs them nuts. They'd rather be poor in spirit because God's there. So they can come thence. Y'all, I, 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 I can call you to tell you everything, you know, and, uh, and, and just run you nuts. And, uh, but I got Susan to do that too. <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't do anything. But as soon as I talk to God, as soon as I talk to God, there's a, it's like a hush that goes over the room. I know, well, I kind of like it here. I just kind of stick my head in the clouds. <laughs> Amen. What you shaking your head for, Susan Cone? You know where that place is. You do, don't you? Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You see what this rent is you're paying? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, not uh, uh, kale salad. <laughs> and it's good, <laughs> but this is better. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, for they shall be filled. So you understand where we're coming from there. Look at Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Now you don't stay out there in the foyer, grand girl. <laughs> that's why, <laughs> hey, Keaton, is what I used to do when I was at Kettle Creek. <laughs> My granddad'd be preaching, and uh, oh man, he'd get going. And, and I'd, if I wasn't asleep, I'd get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> And that's where, that's where I'd spend as much time as I could. <laughs> it's the truth. Or, or, or go out to the water fountain. I am so thirsty. <laughs> we didn't have fountains inside. We had a spigot outside at the pump. <laughs> oh, my soul. Hey, look at Isaiah right here, verse 1. Whoa, everyone that's thirsty has come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, you can't buy this with money. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your souls delight itself in fatness. You've got to eat the word of God. Jesus said, when you're doing that, you're eating my flesh and drinking my blood. And you're not a cannibal, but dear, so you're living off the word of God. The word was made flesh and dwelled among us. We beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And he died so that you could feast off of his body. You eagle, you. And it, uh, don't get too proud there because that word means buzzard. They feed off dead stuff. <laughs> dear, so when God found you, he didn't find much. He didn't have nothing to work with. He had to create a new creature because there's nothing about you like this. 
Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Oh, my soul. David's talking about his great, 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 great. I don't know how great, great son. son. And he talks about the son of David. And David, his grandpa, calls that grandbaby Lord. <laughs> what a great mystery. Man, this is, this is gooder than snuff. This is outstanding. It don't get no better than this. Hollywood can't dream this up. They can't even make a movie about it because they're too stupid. They don't understand. Uh, it's all about the money, amen? Listen, we exchange without money. Well, look at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Did y'all know the day that Jesus was crucified <clears throat> that when they nailed him to the tree that there was darkness over the land. It was a full moon like this one. The Indians call it the worm moon. You know why? Because the worms appear. <laughs> That's what all these birds are doing out here on the ground. It's a worm moon. It's springtime. Well, that moon is full over here and the sun's over here in its brightness, in its full glory. And when Jesus is crucified, miraculously, we're not talking just about that place. We're talking about the whole world. That that full moon in its brightness covers the sun. The philosophers can't explain it. They don't understand. And one, an unbeliever says, surely the God of nature must be dying. Never seen anything like it. How did that moon that follows the sun get over there? Because the sun is dying. And another says the world is dissolving and they're not even in that location. They are in another part of the world. But it was a phenomenon. Is that the way you say it? That they couldn't understand. And as soon as it was, the event was all over, the moon goes back where it was. <laughs> God is not bound in no kind of way. In Hebrews 11, verse number 38, I don't know why I told you that. I just love that. <clears throat> so in, in, in this exchange and in this belief that we have that is so ridiculous to the world, they don't, it's hard for them to believe it. And it, it, it's like the brother uh, uh, brought out that, that we're, being, we're being changed uh, it's, it's a hard thing to give up old Hank because, because you always had him in your life. Surely there ain't nothing wrong with Hank. And uh, so it, in verse number 38, it, it, he talks about uh, God's youngins in the world from the old even into the new that, that are a part of this new eclipse of the sun. He says, of whom the world was not worthy. They, it, it, it was not worthy of them in Moses' day and Abraham's day. And they wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, they believed in the coming of the Lord received not the promise. They didn't get what you've got. They did not get the promise of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said when he gets here, he's going to move inside of you. He shall be in you. And he's going to start doing three things. He's going to convince you of sin. 
Does God have anything to work with? And if you sin one time, is God done with you? The answer is yes. Outside of Christ, yes. And then he's going to deal with your righteousness. And if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, the doctors and the lawyers and the Indian chiefs, God ain't got nothing to work with. <laughs> and what was the last one? Judgment. Horse sense. Thinking particular thoughts of God that would be one that would say when his adversary is in the way and you're feeling your fist boiling up and the blood boiling being and, and God tells you, don't you do it, don't you do it. And just because we do it sometimes, it don't mean you ain't God's youngest. It just means you're fixing to get your fanny tore up. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Now that don't, don't let your mind run there and think you something special. Well, they couldn't be perfect without us. No, until Christ had accomplished what he came to do and sent forth what he's done to the very end of creation. Dear so. They were not made perfect until this promise was accomplished. They will not be made perfect as you will not be made perfect until Jesus takes you out of that dirt right there and puts you back in a glorified body that ain't a never ever going to do all of these things that you've done in your rotten, miserable life. I don't care if you've been in church all your life. I don't care if you've led 10,000 into the creek out there to be baptized. If Jesus Christ is not your hope of glory and you realize that they ain't getting out of here until I lay out my very soul down in his hands. And I promise you this, that you, you're going to pay that last fatherland and you do well to be ready in yourself for that grave. You'd be well if God lets you lay in a deathbed to be able to uh, trust your soul to God and Jesus Christ. Maybe even get to the place where you said, leave me alone, I'm with Jesus. Don't give me nothing else. I want to go be with Jesus. I want to be with Jesus. Help me, Lord. God ain't got nothing to work with. <laughs> he ain't got nothing to work with. So this is a new creation. See, we don't get to take none of the glory. The brother hit it right when he said, that's all they say is me, me, me. It's all about me, 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 me. It ain't about you. It's about Jesus Christ and God's glory and your grace that he's even tolerating you and me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, won't he? Hey, uh, he, he, he's a perfect, he's a faithful creator. And he made the perfect, uh, that man can't even talk. I know it. Because God gave me a new tongue. You just can't understand. <laughs> Look at Hebrews 5, verse number 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he'd offered up prayers and supplications, talking about Jesus, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, was heard and that he feared. Oh, my soul, there had... There was that one. You know how I've been harping on this, that there had to be one that could fear that properly God, a man, and Jesus was that man, and he did because he had never been forsaken. He had never been completely bankrupt of God's presence. God took his very presence away from him, and Jesus was left alone to die at Calvary with only faith in the promise that God would deliver on the promise that that humanity there could go into the dragon's den where that old dragon lives, the grave and death. Oh, my soul. Uh, 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 old grave, where's thy, uh, where's thy victory? Oh, uh, oh death or is it vice versa so somebody tell me because I got to get it right the sting is the grave the sting oh grave where's our sting oh uh. <laughs> oh grave where's our you know what I'm talking about 
But that's the dragon in his den right there. And Jesus was laid in that dirt. And you, you understand that because that precious flesh of his as bone and flesh, they couldn't dig them up and scatter them like David. They couldn't cast them over all the place and still uh, bless his heart. He didn't even have no gold. But he made his tomb with the rich. Didn't even own a grave site. My granddaddy bought me one. He knows I was too stupid. I just lay out there in the sun somewhere. <laughs> Blessed Jesus. Well, th though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect. You understand, this man had to be made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Now, if you don't obey him, you're not going to come until you've paid the uttermost fatherling you must be in agreement with the Holy Spirit that you ain't got no hope outside of Jesus Christ whatsoever and God will rip everything I, I say it this way God's going to rip everything in your hands out of your hands when you lay your life down that's it buddy you going into the presence of God himself and you don't want to go there without Jesus Christ. And the multitudes in this world are going to exactly that place. I just hope I ain't one of them. Amen. I, I, hey, you know what I've been praying for y'all? Boy, this is going to make y'all love me. That God will bring y'all to this place. Hey, if, if, God, if God don't deliver us, there ain't no hope for us. There's nothing here to work with. Nothing. It's got to be a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become. Oh, boy, when God saved me, I sure did become a good person. Mike, hey, look at all the things that I'm doing now. Doesn't everyone love me? <laughs> you stupid. You lost as a snake, son. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Ain't nothing good in none of us. Oh, boy. Ain't God good. All right, look at Revelation 21. We're closing down the store. And if I go over, it's Dora's fault. Ask her to fix the scripture for me and she messed it up. <laughs> she was right. <laughs> Yay. Hey, that's good we can enjoy the Lord, sister. Let, uh, what better thing than for your rent to be paid, amen? You paying a high rent on that body for your soul to live there a little while that, that God is angry with in the condition and the thoughts that it has. You're paying a high rent. God is appeased, yes. But we only got so many grains of salt in that hourglass. And bless God, I'm the oldest, Cindy, I'm the oldest man in this room. <laughs> you sorry. <laughs> she told me I was the oldest living walker, Joseph, when my brother passed away. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that mean? <laughs> Listen at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. In other words, when... When John was born, when he was given life, he said, everything changed. I began to see things different. I began to be convicted about things. I began to be happy about things I wasn't happy about before. I remember one old preacher said, I met his old brother Hunt, old Jerry Hunt Sr. Uh, he, he's dead and gone on to be with the good Lord now. Uh, he, he said some of the best sleep I ever had was on the back row of that church I grew up in. And, and he said, I couldn't understand what that awful singing was about. <laughs> And he said, one day, he said, that was the sweetest stuff I ever heard in my life. <laughs> Amen. Woo, son. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, 
coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Way across Georgia is a city, and it don't look like no bride coming out of the sky, dear soul. This is not a worldly city. This is God's bride. This is his church. And she's coming down. She's created from above. She's born again. She is working on the problems that she's got. And she's telling God the whole time, you ain't got nothing to work with. And when you think that you've got a handle on it, and God says, oh, here we go again. He thinks he's finally doing something. The only reason you're where you're at is because I brought you to that place. <laughs> Help me, Lord. It, I, Mike, if I ever did anything right, it was an accident. And I, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Have you ever had any tears God wiped away? Ah. Feels good, don't it? To know God did that. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. My Savior said that I'll never, that I'll never die, that my, that my soul will never sink beneath the sod. I'm going straight to Jesus. You dig my bones up and cast them everywhere you want to, Jesus still put them back together. What about all them sailors died out on that ocean in them wars that now sharks eat them and everything else? They scattered all over the place. How are they going to get back together? Oh, well, surely God's not real. No, God is real, and God can do anything, as you have well seen, that it rained from this sky yesterday and made a mess out here. Now, thank you, Jesus. I love messes. But it used to water from the ground. But then God shows that what sin has done, he waters it from the sky. Now, he, God just turned the world upside down. He just, <laughs> he can move the sun anywhere he wants. Uh, what John uh, Jasper say? He says, son, do move. <laughs> Old slave preached the message, son, do move. God backed the sun up. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and they're faithful. Dear soul, when Jesus comes to you, I don't care. You, you're going to have trials the rest of your life. You're going to come out of great tribulation. You gone that last enemy, that old dragon, he's waiting in that den for you. And he's hoping he can waller you and make you as uncomfortable as he can. But all you got to do is get to Jesus because he says, I make all things new. What is there designed in this world that can hurt you? God uses everything in your life for your good. And you know that right now, but tomorrow you'll be like this. You wicked thing, you. There ain't nothing to work with. Lord Jesus, keep me near your side. Please keep me there. Amen. Okay. All right. Didn't Jesus say I go to prepare a place for you? Your rent paid. In my father's house are many mansions. Anybody ever called you a mansion? <laughs> huh? I worked 42 years and got a barn. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank God for it. God's been good to me. Amen through all of them and he continues to be good and just think how good he's going to be forever wow thank the Lord praise God thank you Jesus amen I love y'all